High Grade Universal Century Base Jabber Type 89. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert Lucci, 184 2Rs, 2Bs, Gundam Reviews. .net. Excited today to be bringing you another look from an HGUC kit from Gundam UC. It's the Base Jabber Type 89 Subflight System. Let's get these guys airborne. June 2013 release. Don't be fooled by the MSs on the cover. The focus is all going to be on the steeds that they ride in on from Bandai, of course. There you can see the name bar in English and Japanese, 1200 Japanese yen. And there it is, 158 in the aptly named HGUC series. And don't forget, you can get Plastic Gyoza, this kit, and so much more from Gundam UC and beyond from Hobbylink Japan. Links below. The Base Jabbers is a platform for atmospheric fighting and, I suppose later, for getting in delivered into war situations in space. Have a long tradition dating back to Zeta Gundam there. They were a lot more cartoony in colors, but Gundam UC has definitely made everything old new again as you get to see the regular Jestas fighting on the old school Base Jabber there. This is the unicorn version. You can get other colors, especially if you want to go online. But now we get to see the actual Jesta cannon there as they've moved on and you can actually get a whole set Three each times three for all the Tri-Stars. You know Bandai, that's why it sells better than HGH. And whereas the old school base jabber is going to be looking more like a hockey puck just flying through the air, this one is going to have more of a conventional rocket ship through the atmosphere. Anyway, that's going to be up to you, of course. But in terms of looks here, I really like this one because of the grid system that's going to be built in over there. The thrusters are looking good. The white color down the middle, we'll have to see about that. But it's got handles and footrest back there. And overall seems to be looking pretty cool, especially with that yellow cockpit. And here's some information about the base jabber here at the subflight system, which rolled out in 0089 for this one. It was in service for the second Neo Zeon Roar. And why not fight the remnants again, this time when they've actually got sleeves on. And here you can see some line art, not all that impressive. I've definitely seen better line art on pretty much every other HGUC box. But you can see the propellant tanks, they're pretty prominent down there. We'll have to see how the colors go. But yes, you see, what a boon for fans of Gunpla. So the features here have footrests that are going to be sliding back and forth, which is going to be pretty good, especially if you've got the left and right legs offset there. It's got some long landing gear there, so that can even go down below the propellant tanks and keep it off the ground. You can see that you're going to have the propellant tanks are looking pretty sharp down there. You've got the boosters on the back and the big gray ones underneath. And you're going to have MS connecting parts. If you take a look there, you've got one on the top, one on the bottom there, and something to hold it on to an action base. Which is definitely going to come in handy if you want to get them up in the air, but look at that. You saw the two MS connectors, and that's because if you want to put one on the top, one on the bottom, why not space is 3D? Anyway, this is a fantastic way to recreate an action scene on your shelf, and if you've got some Jagans, you can do that, or... See the whole Tri-Stars team flying out there, two regular Jestas to go along with the Jesta cannon. Really, the only question is going to be whether somebody's going to get goofy and fall off. So inside the box we go, where you're going to be getting some white seals there, large to go along with the yellow parts there for the cockpit, and it looks like a jewel there. But look at this, some neat interesting mesh effect there that's going to be really good covering up the parts underneath, and some very bulky parts there for the front. Underneath you're going to have the propellant tanks, the connecting points, and the nozzles for the back to go along with all the handholds. And look at this, you're going to just have a massive B-plate here, just two pieces, lots of places there if you want to go and add some inking in there. And actually paint it up to make that floor look mechanical. Looking good, but definitely no white to be seen. And a very simple small manual. All the plates are going to be labeled 89 type for the base jabber there, and there's some good and bad for it. I think when you see this, you definitely say that's 2013. Bandai using their noggins to make sure that you're going to be showing off as many colors in as short an area as possible by just having this mesh overlap there. I think it looks fantastic. At the same time, you can see down here that these parts are going to be prominently on the front. They're just going to be attaching on there, and they're all painted up by a pro to have some nice gray on there. Not going to be happening here until we check the actual seals. But on the other hand, you're also going to have these oversized large pieces that are going to be making up the front of the kit. Very, very simple construction. This should take no time whatsoever to actually put together. It looks like it's going to be white seals going around over corners. Never necessarily a good thing, but at least there's some good details here carved into the, bo the boosters there on the back. But check that out. This is an absolutely massive B-plate there with an interesting shape. 
you can see that the top and the bottom here are going to be nearly identical except where you're going to have the action base connector there. You've got the foot slides which are going to be interesting the way you can actually have the left and right feet in different places that they get ready to shoot somebody in the air or get ready to jump off and a few connection points down there. Again, just a good amount of etching in there. You can definitely detail this up and make something that's relatively large still look pretty detailed. With the C-plate helping to justify the 1200 yen cost here as you're getting some large plastic there. The propellant tanks are something that when I initially saw the shots of this that I didn't even notice. But you can see that they dominate at least one-sixth of the overall plastic here that's going to be injected. Some interesting framework down there. You can see my finger behind. So good details there. You've also got the hand attachments that are going to be looking good as well as some smaller ones. The landing gear is going to be longer than you'd expect and there's the connecting points there. It's going to help you get the MS and actually get them attached on to a couple or onto the action base there. You're also going to have some small nozzles and the two large ones. These again are going to have some nice colors in there. Of course it's always better if they're going to start to give you the nice red inserts but perhaps we're getting spoiled with the higher grades lately. The seals I'm a little surprised at how few there are as these white ones are going to be prominently are wrapped around the front there which are going to be looking pretty good. They've got these side parts there that are going to be offset with that little cut there. The cockpit is going to be looking good and I've got to go see where that yellow piece goes in. But overall they are still slightly misleading because that nice white stripe nowhere to be seen. It's the kind of thing where if they're going to be making it this prominent why not put it in. And then again of course it's the kind of thing it's easy to tape off here and just paint up yourself. Nice looking cover there as at certain angles it's definitely going to be looking good and you'll see that it's up on an action base one there. Perhaps that's going to be useful for the larger connection point. Only three pages here for the actual manual but they've still got two pages dis uh, devoted to splash paging here. You can see the Jesta looking good, rifle in hand and the knees looking very impressive and the hands actually attached onto the grip. Very very cool. You can see the propellant tank's a little bit lost down there, but the nozzles are going to be oversized and good, especially if you wanted to add a little bit of white paint to it. But I think it's any time you get to see top and bottom, that should be a lot of fun to recreate. And there it is. Why not take any one of these Federation grunts and throw them on? You've got the Jesta, the new Jesta cannon, the old school Jagan from Char's Counterattack, or the very long-lived Jim 3. Some more details that we've already seen, like the footrests and the connection points. Another view still looking impressive, especially with that white stripe there. Looking good when he's down landed on the ground if you don't want to go aerial. And you know that this guy's going to get up to something goofy there. It's the kind of thing like seeing a dog stick his head out of the window. This guy should get scolded by his team leader there. But some great CG and the very dull colors. Definitely in fitting with the overall UC military theme. You're not going to see any Zeta purple here. And onto the inside where you can see the three plates laid out there. A little pricey three plates for 1200 when you're not getting anything extra in terms of parts. However, definitely a lot of plastic injected down there. You can see for the missing parts, if you're missing B1 or B2, they'll charge you 100 to replace it. And for the construction, just two parts, slap them in there, put on the handles there. It's just going to be that top and bottom with the white seals all around. You've got a few small pieces there to add some detail, but once you put the mesh around it, it's pretty much done once you've boosted and landing geared it up. Before the back here is going to have the propellant tanks getting attached there as you slide the footrests in the on the bottom side to the back there. Here you can pop off a cover if you want to go and attach a just on there and put in the C14 connection piece. Here's how you get the hands in there and you're just going to be taking the action base one with its square head interesting there that they're just going to be ignoring all of the various connection modules that you could be using it with. Or you could go back to something like this with an action base one and put in the small one and attach it into a different place after displacing that gate there. And here if you want to put one on the lower side there you can add in some more handles there. Take out the propellant tags put on that second attachment point and you can see where that's going to be attaching onto the, ba onto the actual action base there as this one's going to need a little bit more separation. Here it looks like you're just attaching it right into the square hole there whereas this one's going to be actually attached onto the part and then you can attach it in there and get them up in aerial and you'll have that extra separation by that extra connecting piece there looking very cool again that is just way too much fun and the kind of thing you pay a lot of money for at an amusement park. So some good and bad here for the unbox first of all it's just great to have more variety in terms of the base jabbers and recreating more scenes there. The manual small solid but it's got lots of little tricks and gimmicks that they're showing off to you there. 
Love the fact that you're going to be getting some good details on the B plates there. And the A plate with the mesh is looking great. However, the oversized parts there. And perhaps they could have gone for a third color. You've got to wonder though whether this is worth $1,200. But then again, if you want to get all three and you're a fan of the TriStars, this is going to be the only way to do it unless we ever do get an MG of either of the base jobbers released so far. Anyway, everybody, why don't you let me know what you think of this unbox, the video, and everything else, and stick around to see it all put together in a few MS's top and bottom. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. You know my only comment about this review? It needs more jiggin'.